Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for in inviting me. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy the talk. And this is joint work with Bart Janssen and Yari De Kron. So I will be talking about vertex deletion problems and uh, parameterized al algorithms uh, for them. I will start with an exemplary problem, odd cycle transversal, to, to provide some context in the beginning. So here we are given an undirected graph and we ask for the smallest set of vertices that would hit all the odd cycles or equivalently for the smallest set of vertices whose removal makes the graph bipartite. So when we talk about parameterized algorithms, first we need to choose uh, parameterization. So uh, mm, an obvious choice is to parameterize by the solution size. And then um, we have an algorithm running in time two to O of K times poly N, which detects uh, solutions of size at most K. Another choice for parameterization is to consider some kind of graph measure, such as 3 or 3 def And for both of these parameterizations, we have efficient FPT algorithms solving OCT. And uh, these parameterizations are comparable. Um, it means that 3 is always upper bounded by 3 def but sometimes it is uh, more convenient to consider 3 depth because it can lead to polynomial space computation. <clears throat> On the other hand, the first two parameters, so the solution size and 3 width, are uncomparable. Uh, one can uh, mm, construct a graph with small 3 width but large solution size and vice versa. And once these uh, parameterizations are uncomparable, this leads to a question, can we find an even better parameter that would be, um, that would capture all the tractable instances for these two uh, parameterization and even broaden our horizon of uh, tractability. So we uh, ask for a new parameterization under which uh, the problem would still be FPT, but it should be mm, uh, better than both the solution size and three width. So having this introduction made, uh, I will uh, talk about a few choices of parameterization. So first of all, three depth. Um, to define it, one can consider a process in which in every round, uh, you can remove a vertex from every connected component of the graph. And 3 depth is the minimal number of rounds you need to delete all the vertices uh, of the graph. And this is captured with this recursive formula. Equivalently, uh, 3 depth is the minimal depth of an elimination forest where an elimination forest of a graph G is a, such a forest where like each node corresponds to some vertex uh, of the graph G. And if two vertices are adjacent in G, then they, uh, their nodes must be in a, a, a ancestor descendant relation. So uh, we can try to generalize this concept slightly to make this decomposition aware of some graph class. For example, let H be a class of bipartite graphs. And now we can define the H elimination distance. It is defined really uh, similarly to 3 depth. Uh, we just mm, treat graph belonging to class H as simple, their measure is zero, and the rest of the recursive formula is the same as for 3 depth. And similarly as before, we can uh, treat H elimination distance as the minimal depth of an H elimination forest. So this is a generalization of an elimination forest, but here each leaf 
of such a forest can be uh, potentially a large uh, subgraph as long as the subgraph belongs to our target class H. Here it is bipartite. And uh, um, one can see that H elimination distance is upper bounded by the uh, deletion number to H. So the minimal number of vertex deletion to make the graph um, belong to H. And this is simply because in an H elimination forest, the set of wide vertices must form an uh, H deletion set. All right, so uh, now let's talk about tree width. So let's recall the definition of a tree decomposition. It's a tree of bags where each vertex of a graph uh, appears in a mm, set of bags which uh, induce a connected subtree of T. Each pair of vertices adjacent in G must meet at some back and the width of the decomposition is the maximal size of a back minus one. And three width of G is the minimal size of a minimal width of a three decomposition. So <clears throat> we would like again to extend this de definition to allow um, to treat subgraphs belonging to class H as easy. So the simplest idea is to allow some special bags that could be arbitrarily large uh, as long as they induced subgraphs belonging to class H and each such special bag is adjacent to a single regular bag. And we define a width of such a three H decomposition as a maximal size of uh, any regular bag minus one. So these special bags can be can be arbitrarily large. And we define H3 width as uh, the minimal width of such a decomposition. Now I will give some uh, intuition why um, such the decompo decompositions are still handy for solving H deletion problems. Let's stick to OCT as our, mm, uh, our flagship, uh, flagship example and recall how the classic dynamic programming over tree decomposition looks for OCT. So uh, we scan the tree decomposition in a bottom up manner. And for each bag, we consider a family of states where each state is a partition of such a bag into uh, uh, three sets, a set of red vertices, which are to be deleted and orange and blue vertices which uh, so that the orange vertices would end up on the left side of the final bipartite graph and the blue vertices would end up on the right side. So uh, for each such a state we want to uh, compute the minimal number of deletions in the subgraph given by this by this subtree rooted at, at this back to make the graph bipartite and to make it consistent <clears throat> with the state. So we just need to check if such a partition is valid. So if we don't have edges between the same color uh, vertices and to collect information from children and we fill the dynamic programming table. So when we consider a three age decomposition, we need to consider one more special case case where we have a regular bag and some uh, state uh, for it. And the only children, uh, only child of this bag is a, is a special bag, which induces some bipartite graph. So in order to fill the dynamic programming table for this case, we need to solve the following subproblem. We want to compute the minimum number of vertex deletions here to that allow to mm, make a bipartite graph would be which would be consistent with our state and this turns out to be exactly the same sub problem one comes across when solving OCT via iterative compression and this sub problem reduces to uh, 
max flow and is uh, solvable in polynomial time. Okay, so this was about some intuition. Let me quickly summarize all the all the parameters, old ones and new ones, with which we work. So for any hereditary class of graphs H, we can define parameters H3 width and H elimination distance with such properties that H3 width of G is always upper bounded by 3 width of G and the deletion number to H. Uh, while in general, it can be that H3 width is very small and can be constant, while these two uh, parameters can be very large. Similarly, H elimination distance is upper bounded by 3 depth and deletion number to H. And similarly, as uh, we have a relation between 3 width and 3 depth, we also have this kind of inequality between H3 width and H elimination distance. Another interesting property is that when we consider a class of bounded three width, then um, given H3 decomposition, we can transform it into a regular three decomposition with comparable width. So uh, this kind of new parameterization is mostly interesting for uh, for uh, classes of unbounded three width. So we, we are not interested in say trees, but uh, instead we are interested in chordal graphs, bipartite graphs, planar graphs, uh, graphs uh, uh, excluding some forbidden subgraph or minor and so on. So as with our exemplary problem odd cycle transversal, we can define a more general problem for, for, for any graph class H in which we ask for the smallest uh, set of vertices whose removal makes the graph belong to the class H. And I will refer to this problem H deletion. So our main goal is to solve H deletion for some uh, 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 large spectrum of classes with these uh, new parameterizations by H3 width or H elimination distance. And here we arrive at the first problem. So it is, uh, it is not so difficult to come up with some new graph measures and graph decompositions, which um, makes it easy to solve uh, some uh, some other problem, but it might be the case that actually computing such a decomposition is is harder than solving the problem itself. So when we so when we want to work with such the composition, we need a way to uh, compute them efficiently. And an even more basic problem is that can we just uh, compute this, these, these measures? So uh, when we are given a parameter k, can we, um, can we have an FPT algorithm to decide whether H3 width is at most k? Uh, and observe that a priori, it is even unclear whether these questions are in the class XP. And this... Uh, that there was a recent line of research focused on uh, FPT algorithms for computing uh, these measures. And there are some results for classes which are minor closed, which forbids mm, induced subgraphs or for uh, classes of bounded rank width and some more uh, uh, results uh, announced uh, very recently. But some problem is that uh, these results relied on some heavy um, uh, algorithmic meta theorems, which makes the dependency on the parameter really huge and sometimes even non-uniform. So we would like to take an alternative approach. And instead of computing an uh, 
optimal with the compositions, we can mm, relax this, this task slightly and just settle for approximation. So um, when we are given a parameter k and we are promised that our graph has um, h3 with at most k, we would be happy to just compute a three h decomposition of with h of k, where h is some moderately growing function. Of course, when we settle for approximation, then the dynamic programming routine would uh, would be slower with the with larger width. But the bottleneck of of this approach is to compute uh, compute any any decomposition to start with. <clears throat> All right, so now I can I can uh, present our main contribution, which is the following theorem. It says that for H being a class of graphs defined by either forbidden minors, forbidden topological minors, forbidden induced subgraphs or just subgraphs, or uh, H can be either bipartite chordal or in, uh, it can be class of bipartite chordal or interval graphs. In all these cases, there is an FPT algorithm that computes a three edge decomposition, which is approximately optimal. And this uh, approximation guarantee is polynomial. So we can compute uh, the composition of width um, polynomial in the, in the optimal width. Analogously, there is an algorithm that computes an H elimination forest with a similar, uh, similar guarantee. And the concrete running times and approximation guarantees vary uh, over different graph classes. And um, now I will only uh, show what is exactly happening for our example of bipartite graphs. So we have three algorithms. First one, uh, when given a graph with h elimination distance at most k, runs in polynomial time and returns an h elimination forest of depth roughly cubic in k. And this, um, this uh, polynomial time uh, guarantee, and in particular polynomial space guarantee, is is important because later it it uh, can lead to uh, algorithms running to totally in the polynomial space. We can also uh, use uh, um, FPT running time to get a slightly better approximation. And for computing H3 width, we also have FPT algorithm with moderate running time to compute uh, 3H decomposition of width being uh, cubic in K. Uh, all right, are there any questions so far? Mm, there are no questions in the chat. Okay, let me proceed. So now I will sketch the outline of the proof how to how to construct such uh, approximate decompositions so suppose we are given a graph of um, h3 with at most k so we know that it admits some unknown 3h decomposition and now suppose we are given a vertex and v and we are promised that this vertex belongs to some special bag. And for now, we just would like to find some good candidate for this bag. And uh, what does it mean? That we want to find some vertex set C to which V would belong, that, so that C would induce a subgraph belonging to class H, and C would have small neighborhood because neighborhood of this of this vertex set belongs to just a single regular bag. So uh, we can define such a structure called HK separation, 
as a pair of disjoint vertex sets, CS, such that C induces a um, subgraph of G that belongs to class H, the neighborhood of C belongs to S, and the size of S is at most K. And we define the following problem um, of finding the, the HK separations. So here we also fix some function small h, which governs our approximate approximation factor. And once such an uh, HK separation exists that uh, covers the vertex V, so V belongs to, to set C, we would be happy to just find a uh, uh, separation CS such that the size of S is some function of K. And uh, once we can solve such a subproblem, we can um, invoke, invoke it iteratively on, in, on different parts of our graph to construct a family of connected subsets which ideally uh, cover all the large bags. So after contracting these sets, uh, we also should contract all the large bags and the graph G prime given after, uh, after these contractions uh, should have um, bounded standard three width. And so we can um, execute some known algorithm to compute uh, standard three decomposition in this uh, contracted graph G prime. And then using properties of HK separations, we can lift it back to, uh, to construct a three H decomposition of G of moderate width. And the same outline works when we want to construct um, age elimination forests. Now let me talk about this subproblem of separation finding. So uh, recall that we are given a vertex V and we want to find the separation CS where the size of S is approximately optimal and uh, C uh, covers the vertex V. And let us consider, of course, the example of bipartite graphs. And given such a, uh, given any graph and the vertex V, we construct an auxiliary graph G prime where each vertex V uh, transfers into two copies, V prime and V double prime, and every edge UV translates into two edges. U prime V double prime and U double prime V prime. There is an observation that uh, graph G is bipartite if and only if in G prime, every vertex is disconnected from, from its copy. And we can use this observation to, uh, for our purposes. So suppose there exists some um, separation, uh, HK separation covering V, and in our example, this is the set S. Then when we take uh, mm, uh, both copies of every vertex in the, in the set S, this forms a V prime, V double prime separator of size at most uh, twice uh, the size of S. So we can just... Uh, find the minimal V prime, V double prime separator in polynomial time. And if this is larger than 2K, then we can report that no such HK separation exists. And otherwise, we can transform it into an H2K separation covering V. So we solve our mm, separation finding problem with approximation factor two uh, and in uh, polynomial time.
Mm. Okay, now let's consider another example. Mm. And now I will uh, talk about a class of claw free graphs. So there are graphs which mm, which does not uh, which do not contain and induce k one uh, one tree. Okay, so uh, let uh, first we can check if our uh, input graph contains any clause. If none, then we are done. Otherwise. Uh, consider some fixed claw and the mm, our separation covering v can um, look um, uh, twofold. First of all, this claw can be totally separated from v by the set s. It is possible that there are some other claws uh, in the graph, so there might be some other uh, some other parts of uh, of S. The second option is that part of the mm, claw belongs to set C, but part of it belongs to set S. These are the only two options because since C induces a claw-free graph, this claw cannot uh, lie entirely here. So in this scenario, uh, if our uh, set S intersects the fixed claw F, then there, there is only a constant number of vertices in this claw, and we can guess which, uh, which vertex uh, lies in this intersection. Remove this vertex, decrease the value of the parameter by one, and recurse, because in the... In the mm, in this smaller graph, uh, we are guaranteed that there should exist an uh, H k minus one separation covering V. That was the easy case. And if this claw is entirely separated um, from V, then we, mm, we consider uh, such a set, set S that would be uh, mm, furthest possible from, from, uh, from our claw. And to define this properly, we need to uh, recall the classic concept of uh, important uh, separator. And the uh, separator, UV separator is important. If there is no other separator of size at most S prime, uh, for which the set of vertices reachable from you would be larger. So in this picture, S is not an important separator because we can, we can push it towards V. And once we cannot push it further, then it is important. So it is known that the number of important UV uh, mm, separators of size at most k is at most 4 to the k. And we proved uh, a following lemma that there always exists such an um, uh, hk separation that contains some important uv separator. So uh, now we can uh, again perform branching. So we guess this important separator. We uh, remove this entire part of the graph. We decrease the value of the parameter by the size of S prime, and we recurse on this subgraph. Uh, and this uh, allows us to solve um, separation finding for claw-free graphs in uh, FPT time. And uh, here, the crucial property was that each abstraction to the class H has only um, uh, um, O of one vertices. And for other graph classes, like uh, chordal graphs or minor cl closed graphs, we um, take advantage of other um, 
combinatorial properties such as erdos posh uh, property to uh, to make similar re reasoning all right so let us summarize what what happened so far so uh, for uh, mm, every class uh, in the consideration we need to uh, mm, provide an fpt algorithm to solve separation finding with polynomial approximation guarantee and this automatically implies an approximation algorithm for constructing h elimination forest and tree h decomposition so the hardest part is is done uh, the this this bottleneck part where we want to uh, construct um, any any uh, decomposition so we can perform the dynamic programming but we are not entirely done um, because it is it is uh, unclear for which graph classes um, the the dp routine on tree decomposition can be generalized also to work on tree h decomposition so we would like another meta theorem that would characterize such such classes h for which we can take this approximately optimal uh, tree h uh, um, decomposition and perform dynamic programming so now i will um, talk about uh, three conditions of the class H that uh, makes it um, uh, tractable to, to this approach. First condition is related to the idea of gluing graphs. So uh, a k boundary graph is just a graph with k um, uh, uh, fixed uh, uh, vertices and some labeling uh, of them. So we can, uh, when given two k boundary graphs, we can define a uh, gluing operation in which we just identify vertices with the same labels uh, and uh, construct a new graph by, by just like put, putting them together. So for uh, for a uh, graph class H, we can define a following equivalence relation on the k boundary graphs, and we say that two k boundary graphs are uh, equivalent if for any other k boundary uh, graph H, when gluing H to G one or gluing H to uh, uh, G2, either both gluing products belong to a target class H or none of them. So one can think that two boundary graphs are equivalent if they encode the same behavior around, around this boundary with respect to membership in the class H. And we say that H membership uh, is finite state in for each boundary size K, this relation has finitely many equivalence classes. And when, when you think about uh, dynamic programming um, over three decomposition to solve H deletion, then uh, mm, many such algorithms uh, implicitly um, uh, rely on this property that this uh, this relation is is uh, um, finite state. So we define a function r, uh, and r of k is the maximum size of the smallest k boundary graph in an equivalency class of this relation. In other words. Uh, we can, given some k boundary uh, graph G1, we can always find a k boundary graph G2, which would have at most R of k vertices, and it would be equivalent to uh, G1. And what is uh, nice 
is that for many important classes H, this function R is polynomial. There are some uh, uh, known uh, uh, results that, for example, when H is minor closed, then this function is even linear. And uh, for other classes, uh, we can show that uh, it is polynomial. OK, another um, uh, important uh, property is being closed undertaking this joint union of graphs. So uh, a graph class H is closed under this joint union if, if for two graphs uh, from this class, when we take a this joint union of them, it still belongs uh, to H. So why this is important? Uh, recall this uh, idea of solving uh, dynamic programming uh, with the special case where the uh, child node is the is the large bag which belongs to, to class H and we want to solve some uh, sub problem to uh, fill the DP table and if class H is closed under disjoint unions, then um, any optimal H deletion set can only make uh, K deletions here, where K is the size of the boundary. And this is because if the solution wanted to make more deletions, then instead we could delete the entire neighborhood of, of a, such, a, such a bag. Uh, so we can use algorithms parameterized by the solution size as a subroutine for uh, solving this subproblem. But this property holds only when the class H is closed under disjoint unions. And the last property is related to uh, mm, such a restriction of the H deletion um, problem. So so it is a variant of the problem where some set of vertices is marked as undeletable. And we ask for a smallest set S, which is disjoint from X, uh, whose removal makes the graph belong to, belong to H. And we parameterize this problem with the, with the solution size. And with these three uh, conditions at hand, we can formulate another theorem so that suppose that hereditary class H is closed under disjoint unions, H membership is finite state, and H deletion with undeletable vertices is FPT, then H deletion uh, problem can be solved in uh, such a running time when given a three H decomposition of width T. And uh, most of the considered graph classes um, enjoy all these three conditions. In particular, um, uh, usually it is easy to adapt algorithms for H deletion parameterized by solution size to work with undeletable vertices. Uh, and uh, um, and the examples of classes for, for which this, this applies is our bipartite cordial classes, which uh, exclude induced connect, connected subgraphs or uh, connected minors. And this assumptions that the, these minors or subgraphs in the forbidden family uh, are connected is important because of this uh, first, first condition. And actually, if this condition doesn't hold, so for example, when we want, we consider a class uh, um, of graphs which does not contain some uh, mm, disconnected graph as a, as a subgraph, then such a problem becomes uh, NP hard already for a constant H three with. So we cannot hope for, uh, for any FPT algorithm like that. Okay, so let me summarize one, once again. So uh, we mm, have this uh, 
first met meta theorem to um, compute approximately optimal uh, tree age uh, decompositions or age elimination forests and using the computed tree age decomposition and checking this uh, this uh, assumptions we can finish our quest uh, and solve age deletion uh, parameterized by h3 with which is a stronger parameter than both tree width and uh, uh, deletion number to h uh, there are some other nice results in our paper for for example uh, there are um, algorithms parameterized by age elimination distance which run in polynomial space and also there are other uh, combinations of problem and parameterization considered for example vertex cover turns out to be fpt parameterized by h3 width as long as vertex cover is polynomial time solvable on class h so in particular this holds for bipartite and chordal graphs uh, and we also give some hardness results for example explaining why uh, such uh, such results are not possible for the class of perfect graphs as long as uh, w1 unequals fpt so that's all that I wanted to cover today. I hope you enjoyed the talk and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Miko. Please ask questions. Hi, thanks a lot, Mikhail. I, um, I think I possibly missed something, um, but mm -hmm. could you, potentially give like a, a brief recap of how the equivalence classes are built um, uh, for this for this gluing operation yeah thanks mm -hmm. so for example you can consider uh, uh, again h being class of bipartite graphs and you have two boundary graphs and uh, which are uh, bipartite so far and you ask whether you can find another k boundary graph that when glued here would make this graph bipartite but when glued here it would make it uh, not bipartite so for example when you have a boundary graph g1 and you uh, attach some um, mm, vertex of degree one yeah this doesn't affect uh, this equivalency class okay thanks So if there's no any further questions, then Mikko, let me thank you once again. Thank you very much for giving the talk. Yes, thanks everyone. And we'll see you in the next week. Okay, see you.